So thanks to Tech by Matt and our Secret Santa Exchange, today we're kicking off our first benchmarking in 2019 video with the AMD HD 7850. Let's get into it. Hey, welcome to Zach's Tech Turf. Today we're gonna to be checking out and most importantly benchmarking the AMD HD 7850 to see what it's capable of with some 2019 gaming action. And if you're new here and you wanna see more benchmarking or PC building videos, then hit that subscribe button down below and also that notification bell. That way you never miss an episode, but yeah. Let's check this thing out. All right, so this thing that Tech by Matt sent over is the AMD Radeon HD 7850, specifically the power color model with two gigabytes of GDDR5. The 7850 launched all the way back in 2012, which is seven years old at this point, and it was built on the 28 nanometer platform, which seems like the size of a baseball here in 2019. This specific 7850 is rocking a core clock of 860 megahertz and a memory clock of 1,200 megahertz. For those of you that don't know, the 78 8850 was basically just a locked down version of a 7870 which had a little bit more power. For power requirements, on paper this thing has a TDP of 130 watts and AMD recommends at least a 500 watt power supply because GPUs just weren't nearly as power efficient as they are today. This specific one also requires a 6 pin power connector that's coming out of the back of the graphics card. Speaking of which, I'm sure that most of you saw earlier this week that Nvidia announced that they're doing the same exact thing with the power connector replacement on the RTX 20. 60. It's now on the back of the graphics card. I think it's actually a pretty good idea. It does end up adding about an inch to the length of your graphics card, which is something to definitely be aware of, but it definitely makes your build look way more clean from the side. One more final thing to note about this card before getting into the benchmarks is that I decided to not overclock it for the purpose of this video. You just never know if I'll get lucky or get an insane overclock or even quite the opposite. So I decided to test this card at stock speeds just so you can know exactly what you should expect if you're thinking about picking this card up. Our testing platform today is once again, the trusty Dell Optiplex. I'm actually getting a new Dell Optiplex, so make sure you stay tuned for that. But yeah, like I always say, I feel like this is the best testing platform because this is a computer that you would actually pair with this graphics card. This Dell Optiplex is rocking an i5-3470 clocked at 3.6 gigahertz, has eight gigabytes of DDR3 RAM, a 500 watt EVGA power supply, and the games are installed on a one terabyte Seagate 7200 RPM hard drive. One more thing before getting into the benchmarks is I just want to say that I had no idea what the 7850 was capable of here in 2019. This is the first card that I have in the HD 7800 series in the entire studio, and the results were pretty eye-opening. The first game up on my benchmarking run was Fortnite, obviously, and I actually got a nice 68 FPS average with 1080p and medium settings and the resolution scale at 100%. Quick disclaimer though, please don't mind the terrible gameplay. Next up we have Rainbow Six Siege, and here in 1080p and low settings, I got a stupid high FPS average of 103. I honestly couldn't believe when I saw this as the 0.1% low state at 60 FPS, which is absolutely perfect. CSGO followed up next. We'll get into the tougher to run and newer games in just a second. And here in 1080p and medium settings, I average yet another impressive average of 141 FPS. PlayerUnknown's Battlegrounds was next. And to bring things back to reality, here I only averaged 42 frames per second in 1080p and low. It might not be a bad idea to crank this one down to 720p if you want closer to that 60 FPS mark. Moving on, I tested Rocket League. And here with a 1080p resolution and high quality settings, I averaged 111 frames per second and it was seriously running buttery smooth. Next up was Grand Theft Auto 5 and this one was probably the biggest surprise of them all. Here in 1080p and low settings, the HD 7850 was still able to maintain an 87 FPS average and the game performed great. Getting into the newer and tougher to run games, I tested Battlefield 5 up next and here in 1080p and low settings, I still managed to get an FPS average of 50. The game did stutter a good bit as you can see with the low 1% and 0.1% lows, so you might want to go 720p on this one. Assassin's Creed Creed Odyssey followed and for this one I did decide to drop the resolution down to 720p with low settings and I averaged 42 FPS with the built-in benchmarking tool. And finally the last game on my benchmarking run was the new Shadow of the Tomb Raider with its built-in benchmarking tool and here I averaged 39 FPS in 720p and low settings. So there you have it that's what the HD 7850 is capable of here in 2019 and I don't know about you guys but this thing honestly shocked the heck out of me. I really had no idea that this budget card from 2012 was still capable of running almost every game in 1080p still and if you can find a really good deal in it then it may just
just be a good option for your next budget build. Well, that wraps up my review of the HD 7850 here in 2019. Now feel free to head on over to one of these two videos if you haven't seen them yet and definitely hit the subscribe button because next week I honestly haven't planned my upload schedule, but I promise it's going to be good. You probably don't want to miss those videos.